Live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America, bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ben Crossman, and everyone out there, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you are having a great day and you're ready for some Computer America. So today on the program, we have, uh, in the second part of the show, Computer and Technology News, where we'll be going over some of the biggest stories, trying to keep you up to date, and really try to uh, keep you informed, because, you know, we try to do this every Every single day and let's face it it's not easy there's a lot of headlines there's a lot to talk about and of course that's going to be a lot of fun again in the second part of the program uh, in the first part of the program though is dedicated to a guest and today's guest well this is something special none other than swan security I'm sure that you've seen them at the at your local uh, home home improvement stores, hardware, things like that. And it's going to be a lot of fun talking to our guests all about well, uh, you know, what is they have to offer. And by the way, we will be talking about security cameras and uh, and so much more. So everyone, you want to stick around for that. So in the first part of the program. Uh, well, hey, Computer America, we will be doing. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry. Uh, first things first. That's what I meant to say. First things first, ComputerAmerica.com. That's where you'll find everything, including links, articles, reviews, show notes, topics, videos, podcasts, archives, and more. All of that at ComputerAmerica.com. Find us on social media, wherever it is, uh, at Computer America. You'll find us right away. And, of course, uh, check out our website. So, all that being said, hopefully made that very clear, very concise, and we are ready for today's program. So, a little, uh, you know, some things happen in the background that uh, I, I personally probably could have done better, but it's perfectly okay. I see that he's on line with us, and our guest is waiting in the wings. So, joining us today is none other than Mr. Jeremy Stewart. He is the Vice President of Global Marketing for Swan Security, and we're really happy to, uh, to have him join us, and why don't we go ahead and say hello. So, uh, assuming everything works well, Jeremy, welcome on to Computer America. How you doing? Hi, Ben. Good to be with you. I'm really well, thanks. I'm, and, I'm fighting fit. Yeah. Oh, and and by the way, uh, coming in loud and clear, everything sounds great, and I'm so happy that that uh, that, that worked right off the bat. So, uh, yeah, happy to hear from you. And uh, let's go ahead and just start with. Um, First off, the accent. Uh, I, I did notice that when I was researching Swan that um, you know you guys were started in Australia, but of course now you operate in like 40 countries or something like that. It's truly incredible. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give us a bit of background on yeah, Swan sure. Security and a little background on yourself? Absolutely. So the business was um, started uh, in 1987 by uh, a guy named David Swan, uh, and it was started in Melbourne, Australia. Um, David Swan was um, uh, retired at the end of 20, 2014, um, and uh, he's kind of like the uh, just a, a brilliant guy, kind of like the um, the Doc out of Back to the Future. Uh, you know, a, a, a brilliant ideas. You know, really passionate. Uh, I like to say that once you met him, you'd never forget him. And uh, so he started the business in in Melbourne, Australia, 
uh, initially just uh, building modems for his friends uh, who were early adopters of the internet, but then had an idea in in uh, in about 1999, I believe, that he saw a, a, a little a little um, spy camera in a sharper image store, and he thought that could be a good idea to sort of build that into a, a category at retail, you know, to for consumers to buy security products uh, via retail stores and. Um, so he sort of was the pioneer of do-it-yourself security as a as a retail category. So, yeah, he started it all, and and um, he he was certainly here for yeah the first part of my uh, journey with Swan. I started here myself in in two thousand and four, uh, and but David, one of the brilliant things he did was he always had big plans internationally. So right from day one with the business, he was already selling product uh, in the U.S. and Canada and and in Europe. So, uh, yeah, Swan's always pretty much had an international focus, even though the business started in Australia. I got you. I got you. No. And, and of course, uh, his, you know, the company continues on and it has really, I guess, kind of uh, fleshed out, um, you know, it's not just little, you know, little dinky cameras. No, you have a lot of different offerings that, uh, that cover a lot of different verticals. And I think, um, so, uh, actually, full you know, kind of full disclosure, we have an article written up. Uh, we recently reviewed. I think the main thing we're going to be talking about, which is the the outdoor spotlight camera, the 1080p uh, camera. We'll be posting that up on the website after this interview. But it, it was it was a lot of fun, and it was great to get my hands on it. Uh, so I think you know, Jeremy, to uh, to kind of introduce us to this product, talk about you know where Swan was kind of hoping this would land, you know, small, medium business, personal homes, uh, things like that. Where, where did the idea for this spotlight camera, you know, kind of come from? Yeah, well, um, you know, for, for listeners who are um, uh, over the age of uh, 30, I would say, you know, they might think of security in the old days was, was kind of off to the side was was um, you know not the easiest to to um, manage in terms of um, you know the video files you might get and and it was security sort of sat off to the side it wasn't really integrated with other technology but um, you know for the last ten years or so that's all changed and now um, security systems are really um, focused on being able to be used by your smartphone so uh, the product we're talking about the um, spotlight camera is a good example of that where it's all set up uh, via Wi-Fi. You do need to power the camera, so you've got to plug it into power because it draws quite a lot of power given that it's got um, sensor lights and night vision and and some features that draw power. So you plug it into power, Mm -hmm. you then um, connect to your Wi-Fi network and it transmits the video over Wi-Fi and you can then view that and interact with the camera um, on your smartphone. But the thing I, I really like about this uh, product and and where Swan's kind of heading, I guess, with more and more of our products is it's about crime prevention. So once again, with with security in the old days, it was all about just seeing what was happening. You couldn't really do anything. But now with this spotlight camera, you know, it it has sensor lights, bright spotlights that turn on if it sees activity. It also has a siren that can be sounded, a, la- a loud siren that can be sounded. It has two-way audio, so you can interact with people that you see on camera. You can you know, greet guests or you can warn intruders. So, um, and it sends you alerts. So there's now a kind of a crime prevention element to a product like this that I think is 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 really really cool and and what what security is all about when we talk to consumers they tell us that security means preventing bad things from happening it's not just about seeing it happen after the fact although that's another element to this to this camera is you do get recordings of the activity that happens but it's 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 more about um, prevention ben so that's why we're really excited about this camera because it it brings you know video lighting siren and alarm all together in one package yeah, it it certainly the the siren is certainly very very loud, and I think that's you know some of those features are uh, what really stood out to me when I was checking this thing out was you know the two way audio. Uh, some of the other cameras that we've reviewed here on the show, they you know the the, the speakers on on the camera are very very quiet. The microphone uh, is very prone, like it it's almost like the microphone's very small. And they boost the gain incredible, you know, just like a lot just to pick up any kind of noise. And that's, um, you know, and the gain boost just causes the audio to be some of the worst audio you can get. Um, so this one, though, really excelled at that two-way communication uh, 
and I guess with that, are you seeing people, you know, kind of maybe positioning this at the front door? Is this something that, uh, you know, should be up on a pole somewhere, you know, kind of uh, out of reach? Uh, how how would Swan kind of recommend it, and how are customers, you know, best you you know yeah, best sure. using this camera? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, and just picking up on the audio too, the, the audio can be a little tricky. Uh, for for cameras because you've got to make sure that it's weatherproof. This mm-hmm. this camera is weatherproof, so that that can sometimes be a challenge. But you, you're right. I think the the audio range on this camera is about 16 feet. Yeah. And uh, and two way audio and the siren is a really important part of, of what makes this camera tick. But in terms of where to position the camera, it, it is an outdoor camera, so you, you do need to have it as you think about where to where to mount it. You need to think about uh, the fact that you do still need to power the camera. So. Um, it uh, comes with a 60 foot uh, long power cable. So you need to think of where you can position the camera that's still in Wi-Fi range in, in terms of your premises, be it a small business or a home, um, to run that, that, that power cable from the, from the camera to that, that, that power socket that's within 60 feet. So you need to think about that. In terms of the height, um, we recommend that, um, that it's up high enough that, um, and there's a bit of trial and error with this, but you, you need to have it high enough that it's out of reach of mm-hmm. people but you don't want it too high that you're just seeing the tops of their heads because, you know, security is about being able to identify who's there. Uh, and and if, certainly if it's someone you don't want to be on site, uh, you know, you want to be able to identify who it is and um, if you need to hand that to law enforcement or whatever. So it's about finding that sort of range um, in terms of the, the right height. So, you know, it's probably going to be about somewhere in the range of you know nine or ten feet above ground i guess yeah um give or take but um yeah it's a little bit of trial and error in that but certainly it's an outdoor camera so it works really well in all conditions be it be it hot weather or, or uh, cold weather rain snow it's it's uh, certified to work in in the outdoors which is great yeah and and generally what we recommend is is obviously uh you install them outside but have some kind of cover and not you know make some kind of, you know like underneath a, a patio or a porch or something like that uh so it can like it can get wet it can get snowed on but obviously uh you know you want it to last as long as possible so try to put it under some cover and trust me i'm i'm not the best with tools i'm not the best at installing these kinds of things uh i was able to get it up and running uh and and, and by the way that's what I, and we're going to talk about it later but uh, your like the software side, the app side, the the product registration side was was some of the most flawless I've seen on any of these cameras. Uh, we had it up and running and filming within a couple minutes, uh, and then it took me about you know 25 minutes to actually put it up where I wanted it. But I'm not actually uh, very good with tools, so that's probably more my fault. Because in all honesty, it's just four screws and you screw it in, and then of course you got a um, you know 60 feet worth of cable or inclu- is included within the box. Uh, not not hard at all. So I mean. It's, I'm similar, uh, by the way, Ben. Yeah. I'm similar too, by the way. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm not I'm not so bad with the software and uh, and and that side of things, the networking and all that. But I'm not the world's greatest when it comes to the the tools and things. And and uh, I always feel like I haven't you know quite done a good enough job myself uh, around the house. But um, but that that's one of the things about this camera is that it, it, we have invested heavily in the software we have a, a team of developers in-house i think there's about 18 at last count mm-hmm. and uh they work around the clock yeah trying to improve our, our software we, we've got this particular camera and now all future uh, swan products moving forward on our own swan security app yeah. um for want of a better term it's a it's an ecosystem or um but certainly an app ecosystem that allows you to have everything interconnected be it a camera like this, this is that's a Wi-Fi camera, or our wire-free products that are coming out, but also, and and it's uh, the product lineup that Swans may be better known for is our wired security systems. We can have multiple cameras, mm-hmm. will connect into an NVR or a DVR box. All of those products now interconnect on this one app, which is really cool. Uh, so you can can you know on on screen at once, you can see you know video from your spotlight camera alongside video from um, you know a wired system you might have at another site you may have it at yeah. your office or, or at, at home and vice versa so yeah that's really cool having it all interconnect on the one app yeah the the, the app was definitely uh, one of my favorite parts of using this whole system but of course you know the entire thing was um, you know was very interesting to use and if we could take just a little step back here which is obviously you know you mentioned crime prevention uh, not just that but of course monitoring and you know kind of peace of mind but uh, I, I mean, 
we noticed we, we noted this in the article and after being at CES and we're going to talk about you know how CES was for you guys but uh, the traditional way of home security was you call someone out from a, a large uh, company that would install hardware that you never really touch uh, they would control the hardware they would monitor it for a monthly fee and uh, you know it's just money 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 you know falling out of you trying to get the system and lately the trend is of course do it yourself you know you monitor yourself of course you can you know kind of pay a little bit for uh online video storage and you know some kind of some kind of active monitoring but you know even in your products you have you know we're going to talk about things like you know kind of person detection and you know heat sensing and things like that uh is that how and of course you know swan's been in in the do-it-yourself space before it was really a space um is that how security is that how personal security you're seeing that going for homes is people doing it themselves yeah, I think so. We, we, you know, and I think going back to David Swan, I think that's why he was uh, such a visionary guy. He, he saw an alternative. You're right. Uh, security up to that point had been something, you know, you call an installer or an integrator or you call your insurance company and they took care of it. The, the, he saw the possibility of, of do-it-yourself becoming, as you say, becoming a thing. Um, and uh, so for us, it's all about giving consumers choice um, and but the other the other thing that's happened in the last 10 years is the technology has become so easy and it has become so much simpler to set up a security system. Wireless technology has become uh, more robust. Mm-hmm. It's more able to integrate with your existing infrastructure like your Wi-Fi network and, and the like. So I think it, it's the, it was about giving consumers choice, but it's also been aided by the, the technology becoming so much more consumer friendly and user friendly and and also networking you know it was so hard in the early days of of, of certainly when i joined swan to get set up uh, get a security system connected to the internet was really kind of complicated that's become so much easier now um we you know peer to peer to peer technology and you know you scan a qr code and it populates all the networking fields that you need to connect and away you go so it's the it you know technology's really helped this surge to to make it more um uh, consumer friendly and, and and Swan, we try we pride ourselves on taking the kind of the professional technology, the technology like we, we sort of pioneered uh, moving to full HD and ultra HD in the in the consumer space, and taking that 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 you know really good resolutions, and then you, you touched on the person detection and sort of the analytics and smart alerts and things, and packaging that in an affordable way, and, and we pride ourselves on making it affordable for the listeners and for consumers where they can go and buy the product either online or in store and then there's no more to pay so for our model is very much making it to bringing professional technology to consumers making it affordable and our model is all around you can take it home out of the box plug and play no more to pay and and that's 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 really our model so you know and i think you know we're we're, we're proud of the we're proud of um i think it's on our packaging somewhere that you know we say four million homes safe Mm -hmm. we're really proud of of all the all the people of the fact that we've made so many homes so many small businesses safer um uh, over the years and and uh and we like to think we've we've made a bit of a difference which is great yeah and and you also mentioned something there that uh it it was not on the product that, that we reviewed but uh we did notice that some of the security cameras like I would say even like five to ten years ago, all the security camera footage that you saw, uh, you know, even even like the best footage that you saw, it was like uh, grainy. It was hard to see. It, it was like, hey, can you identify this person for us? And it was like four pixels. And it's like I, no one can identify can identify that person. Uh, you mentioned uh, ultra high definition, which this one, uh, the camera 1080p, which is you know a lot of people are very very familiar with it. 4K uh, from from a security camera that is something uh really different so again it's not on, on the on the spotlight that we're talking about but it's very cool to see that uh, even security cameras are moving to 4k yeah well I've, I've been on that journey myself ben I, I had the first system i had from swan was um i think it, it was called d1 which was just a, a an industry term for much fewer pixels and and i remember when i first got that installed um i thought the image quality was okay you know okay but it was a bit hazy uh, this is going back like 10 years mm-hmm. and i remember when i first heard of ultra hd it sounded like something from a james bond movie or something i thought oh, that's so far in the future you know but then it came in in the world of flat screen tvs and then it and it quickly it didn't take that long for it to come into the world of security and so i now have 4k at home and 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 i will say 
for the listeners that um, the image quality is amazing on 4K. Um, and I'm not just saying that about Swan. I think, you know, 4K in the realm of security now in general is is amazing. And it's amazing in, in two ways. It's amazing in terms of the live view image quality you can see, which is just really crisp, true colour. You can see faces. You can see licence plates. You can see, uh, you know, detail that that's, um, that's really impressive. But the, the other part that I really like about 4K is, the zoom factor the more pixels you have the more powerful the zoom is and zoom both in live mode and in playback is is awesome for seeing things like you know tattoos logos on clothing labels on boxes um it, it really is worth i think um in a lot of cases if you certainly if you're buying a wired system thinking about investing a little more and getting getting a 4k system just because the image quality is so amazing yeah, yeah the 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 idea of a 4k and especially um just Everything that you mentioned, and a lot of cameras out there have digital versus. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, some of them have have optical zoom. Most have digital zoom, which isn't really all that helpful because it's essentially you're you're taking what few pixels are there and you're just kind of narrowing in and you know kind of reducing the total amount of pixels on the screen. And if the base image you know, if the base image isn't there, no matter how much you digitally zoom, the image will never actually get better. It would just get a little bit blurrier every time. So having that gets base more, 4K, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. And again, actually, it frustrates people. Uh, you know, they zoom in and <laughs> they think, oh, I can yeah. see more. It just gets larger, but blurrier. You know, it's sort of like it's it, it really frustrates people. So, yeah, I think the the image quality and, and yeah, things like as well, um, now with more and more spotlights on the cameras that we're making, um, that then aids color night vision. Um, a lot of the listeners may not mm. know with with um, security systems up until recently, night vision was um, you know black and white, yeah. um, a bit like bit like on Survivor when they've just voted someone off at tribal council and they go back to the camp and complain and you know cry and stuff. And you see their glow, glowing picture, eyes, yeah. infrared, black and white, glowing eyes. Um, that's also becoming a thing of the past as more and more of the cameras now have color night vision, which is that same impressive uh, video quality we just talked about, but uh, the same at night. And, and that's, that's amazing as well. And, and once again, AIDS identification of what's happening and, and uh, being able to keep you safer. Yeah. So, and, and by the way, um, you know, you're, you're mentioning some products like 10 years ago, five years ago, um, you know, you mentioned like the 4k was, you know, futuristic and then it, you know, here we come, uh, it's in most people's homes. Uh, when you design something like, you know, let's say again, we're mainly talking about the outdoor spotlight camera here. Uh, how long does it take to go from, you know, kind of conception, like, Hey, uh, we can get a bunch of these cameras and put them into our, you know, into our cameras and we can build a system around it. How long does it take from, you know, kind of conception of the idea to product on the shelf? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. It, it, for a camera like the Spotlight, uh, it's probably about 12 months. Um, and uh, it's exciting for me being in marketing, kind of seeing the, the start of, you know, sometimes we'll kick around an idea going, you know, we need an outdoor Wi-Fi camera that can do X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, I should say. <laughs> uh, and, and then and then we'll say, you know, wouldn't it be great if we added siren and lighting? And then so you, that sort of you, you blue skying some ideas, brainstorming some ideas. And then to see it, you know, hit the shelves, it's, it's usually, you know, as I say, somewhere around 9, 10 or 12 months, something like that. And it's super exciting because the, the, the products that do make it through are kind of like your own kids. Um, and um, so, you know, this, the, the spotlight's a, a child of mine and, and uh, just, just thinking about which school to send it to and which college. But, um, <laughs> but no, it, it, it is exciting seeing them, them hit the market. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's also good when you look at an opportunity. You know, you look, when opportunity sounds a little crass, but you think of a, a consumer need, a camera that's, wi you know, Wi-Fi, uh, uh, but that has preventative qualities about it. Lights, siren, like we talked about, mobile alerts, two-way audio. When you think about sort of the fact that there is a need in the market for that type of camera, and then you're able to build something that meets that need, that's that's where it's really exciting. And and you know also at a at a you know uh, at a at an affordable price too. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. These uh, you know we have certainly seen cameras that uh, have. <laughs> are way more expensive, but then we've also seen some that are quite a bit cheaper. The problem with the ones that, you know, we've experienced when they're cheaper, um, first of all, 
the software and, and that kind of side of it, you know, kind of the back end support and especially the customer support, uh, definitely not there. It's, uh, you know, the, the way that manufacturing works is that so much comes out of China and, you know, companies will kind of pop up overnight. They'll offer these cameras that are 20, 30, $40. Uh, but then the company's gone by the time the product actually ships to your house. Uh, there, you know, you can find a lot cheaper on the market, but at the same time, um, you know, they, we don't recommend them because I guess, you know, the customer support isn't there. Uh, obviously not a problem with a company like Swan who's been around for so long. And of course, as I said before, uh, in, you know, so many home improvement and re and, and retail spaces as well. So, uh, um, yeah, I think, I think it's a good point. And, and, and I, and I, I think, you know, with security, it's such an important part of our lives that, um, it, it, and I advise the listeners, do your homework, you know, do, do, do the research online and, and find a reputable brand. Don't just go for the cheapest um, and, and make sure you're getting, uh, you want to avoid those cameras that you can buy online that, are, uh, that work out of the box with a default password. You want to have, you know, a strong um, strategy when it comes to your, the, your privacy and, and um, security of your, your, of your um, security products, um, you know, a username, um, a strong password, alphanumeric uh, special character password, and guard those details like you would your bank details. You know, you want to make sure that you're really um, uh, switched on when it comes to your own privacy and security. Um, and, and yeah, choose a reputable brand and, and hopefully that'll be Swan, but certainly choose one that's reputable and, and avoid, I call them the cheaper nasties, Ben, you know, the, 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 the cameras that are dirt cheap and work out of the box and don't have that, don't have that uh, well, security backing them. Yeah. The, the, uh, you know, some of the biggest news articles that we've reported when it comes to, uh, you know, well, kind of like botnets and, uh, other issues. And of course there's the entire IP connected internet camera, uh, problem where they have these kinds of like search engines almost for for cameras where they have little bots that crawl out and go this is an ip camera it's sending out a live video feed and it has no password anyone can find it anyone can look at it and then of course it's very uh you know kind of anti-crime deterrence if you know hey anyone can log into your camera and say oh they leave the house every day at eight they come back every day at six and so that means we, you know, anytime between that, we can come in and take whatever we want. Uh, only the people that you want accessing the camera should access the camera. And actually, that's a pretty good segue into a question about, you know, more than just one person usually lives in a home. Uh, if you wanted to share the feed, share the account, um, or, you know, let's say you wanted to give temporary access to, uh, you know, maybe house sitters and things like that, uh, that's something I didn't explore within the app. I'm assuming that's a feature within the app to be able to share the video with exactly who, who you want to. Yes, you can. So you can give access to it. It's, it's certainly up to you. you. You can decide to give access to whoever you want. Uh, they just download the, uh, the app and um, you can set it, set up um, logins for them uh, and then they can, they can log in. So yeah, let's say you were going away for two weeks and you had house sitters or something, you can give them access to the system and then just, uh, you know, cancel their access when when you don't need them to have it anymore. But certainly, you can have multiple people. Also, it's really good for that's a good option to think about with um, elderly relatives and 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 other family members who you might need to check in on. Mm -hmm. You know, you might set up your grandmother's house with some cameras, um, and then um, you're able to to log in and see how she's going, make sure everything's all right. Um, and uh, um, certainly, you can set up the alerts. The 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 the, the uh, spotlight camera has. Uh, person heat and motion detection so you can set up the the um to get alerts uh for example you might think she shouldn't be out in the backyard at a certain time if an alert goes off out in the, in the cameras in the backyard and you see the alert come from that camera you can then log on see what's happening um and then potentially go around and see her or give her a call or whatever so it, it's about it's about you know it, you can kind of customize yeah. where and how you use this camera, how you use the software based on your personal situation. If you if you just want to have it uh, set up so that your grandmother feels like she's got some added security, you can. But if you want to take it that little bit further and set up the alerts and everything, you can do that too. So yeah, it's really, really up to you. Being able to manage by exception, uh, and especially, 
you know, obviously uh, people can have multiple cameras. And if you have, like you said, multiple locations, uh, you don't want your phone, you know, kind of activating every two seconds because it, it detected something. Uh, you want to be able to manage by exception. And if something happens out of the ordinary, that's when you want to be able to jump into action. Uh, so two more things uh, that we should talk about. And then we'll talk about some of the, uh, you know, some of the broad, broader things. But first one was integration. We mentioned the phone app, which is all uh, well and good. And uh, again, it works very, very well. Well, but uh, one feature I, I didn't try out, even though I have a Chromecast, uh, Google Assistant and, of course, Amazon's Alexa Assistant. Uh, why did you feel, uh, you know, why did you feel that digital assistants need to be led into, I guess, that kind of thing? It, it, does it integrate very well? Uh, have you, was there any challenges into integrating that? Uh, so they're both native integrations, meaning we, we work in a hands-on way with the developers at both Google and Amazon. Um, we, we made the call to, the word I'd use is be agnostic. So we've, we, we let the consumers decide whether they want to go with Alexa or Google Assistant. Some other brands, as you know, Ben, have sort of, are in one or the other camp. Um, and that's it. You, if you buy that that camera, you, you're stuck with either Google Assistant or, or Alexa. Right. We've decided to have both, and I think that was a smart move for Swan. Um, we just really felt like it, it comes down to um, ease of use, um, and uh, the the term we use is speak to see. You know, you can use voice commands that are kind of easy and intuitive to see what the cameras see on on your um, smart TV or um, on your um, you know, echo device with a screen and, and then away you go. So it's about really trying to make the product easy to use and, and integrate in, like I touched on earlier, security in the past, way off to the side. These days, you can integrate it into your smart home. You can integrate it with the technology that you have in your home and it's kind of seamless. So, you know, we're, we're, we're really excited about that. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I have it set up at home myself. The funny thing, I've got, I've got uh, four kids and they're all kind of um, – not all, but they're a little bit kind of um, paranoid about technology, so they'll often unplug my Google Home device because they 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 feel like, yeah. oh, what if what it's if Big Brother's spying yeah. on us? Yeah, and I, I say to them, guys, you're not that interesting. No one, no one wants to listen. <laughs> but but um, for for most of us, uh, it really is handy being able to use voice commands, and, and it's just another way of, I guess, uh, making the the security um, uh, world. Uh, easy to ac easier to access and easy to use. So I think it's yeah, a good thing th to have. that's uh, it, that's certainly a complaint that that comes up often. And uh, we we actually uh, just about a week ago we, we had a gentleman on the show that was in charge of like helping cities become smart cities and, and connected cities. And he even said it outright that uh, you know um, among the logistics, the cost, the actual technical you know knowledge to be able to do this and, and implement this kind of thing. Uh, one of the one of the major tent poles of his organization is to talk about privacy and surveillance and how much people are willing to accept. Um, and and I, I will say that the camera that uh, you know the the spotlight that we tried out um, has a little red you know can has a little red light to show you when it's recording. If you of course we've been talking about putting these outside your home. If you put them inside your home, you'll be able to know when they're recording. And um, you know it, it's it's not a spy camera by any means. It's uh, yeah. So that's good. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. It's a robust outdoor camera. Um, you know that there are. I would advise the listeners if they're looking for an indoor camera, there's, there's probably more, um, uh, you know, less obtrusive cameras, you know, smaller um, cameras, more slimline um, bodies that are probably better for indoor use. This camera is very much a robust outdoor camera. I gotcha. I, yeah, uh, yep. yeah. So, yeah. And, and so uh, with all that being said, let's, and, and I think people should be comfortable by now with the fact that uh, digital assistants do exist, smart TVs do exist. And of course, uh, hey, you know, with the price of cameras and of course, things like doorbell cameras. And I even saw on, on I'm sorry, on your website, you have uh, floodlights that are also cameras as well. Uh, you know, cameras are, are just starting to be integrated into uh, essential parts of the home. And so I think most people should expect that most homes have some form of security camera. It's uh, you, you've chosen a good, a good company and a good place to be. And I guess this is where I ask And of course, you know, we have a question here about what's kept you with Swan for 15 years. I, I got to say that, you know, in the early days, you were doing something very technical, very, um, you know, kind of very nascent, though, I guess, 
I don't really want to ask that question. The question I want to ask you is, uh, what what gets you excited about Swan? You know, kind of in the coming fifteen years, because if you know it was a uh, kind of a pain in the butt to do it fifteen years ago, and now it's it can't really be much easier. How how do you see this going in fifteen years, and and how do you see this evolving? So it's it, it's it's interesting. When I first started at Swan in, in two thousand and four, our export sales manager came up to me and he goes. Um, in no marketer that's ever worked at Swan has lasted more than six months. He goes, he goes, you won't last. You'll be gone in six months. That's ominous. And anyway, the, 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 I was like, oh, thanks for that little vote of confidence. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the funny thing was he was gone in six months. They let him go and here I am uh, nearly 16 years later, which is a bit of a source of pride. But yeah, it, it, I, I get excited about where the technology is heading because it's so much more um, user-friendly now and um, – I'm excited about the, once again, the world of professional security becoming available to everyday people. So it's the facial recognition. You know, facial recognition is where you can actually identify an individual's face. You can nominate uh, someone that you're interested in knowing whether they're home or not. So it might be, you know, my daughter Tess. Mm -hmm. Then you can sometimes exclude people from that list. So you can say, maybe she's got a boyfriend that I don't like and I can go, little Dylan, I want to know if Dylan's coming around because I don't want him there. So you can sort of set up the alert so that, you know, it's saying green light, Tess is home safe, which is great. Red, Dylan's Dylan showed up and I don't want him there. Um, and you can set up alerts around that. So it's that that's an example of where the sort of professional world of security is becoming more accessible for everyday people. And it's about knowing what's happening sooner. And I think that's what's really exciting as well as sort of getting more intel from your security system. So then you can decide what you do. And you might say, uh, Dylan's all right, I'm just going to let him go. Or you could go, no, hang on, Dylan, Dylan should not be on site. And, you know, you call up someone or you make sure that he's, that, you know, you go around and tell him to leave or whatever. But um, I like the fact that it's it's making it's empowering everyday people with their security. And um, you know, I think about as well you know, what gets me excited is just um, the the fact that um, it's all becoming more integrated as well. And I mm -hmm. think this um, Swan security ecosystem, you know, for a long time Swan wanted to have. We, we used to talk to our, our customers and they'd say, "Why doesn't everything work on one app?" And it was sort of a pain point for our for our customers. And so. I just love the fact that we've invested in that that ecosystem with it, with developers in house, and I'm really excited about where that's heading, Ben. You know what what things we can do uh, with everything integrated together, and you know I'm I'm thinking of of where we can take the app next. What else? What other feature? What other cool features we can add to the app to to make it uh, even better um, and make that make it sort of like an, an essential security companion for people? Because most times, and most of the customers I talk to, they will. Once the product's set up, once the physical hardware is set up, they don't mm -hmm. touch it too much. It's it's really the app is what they interact with every day. And so for me, it's about coming up with cool things that we can add and cool features we can add into the app um, to just to make it more valuable as we move forward. So um, that that's what gets me excited is sort of seeing that the technology become more, more accessible for everyday people, more affordable. And then what other features can we add to that ecosystem? Yep. Yeah, there, there are certainly a lot that you can add there because um, – Everything being able to talk to each other, I mean, something as simple as, let's say, a smoke detector, which has been in everyone's home for, you know, 100 years, suddenly that can become a sensor for, you know, any number of cameras or other systems in your house to make sure that, you know, if, if there is smoke detected in your house, uh, you know, make sure everything else is okay. You know, your smoke detector can say, well, let's turn on some cameras. Let, let's see if there's any, you know, kind of fire in places there shouldn't be. Uh, things like that. It, you know, it's... Um, it, when it all just works and all just talks together, I think people are really going to see the benefits of that kind of thing. And I got to say that, you know, we, uh, speaking of fire, we actually met with Kitty out there at CES. Uh, we actually met with a lot of companies, including yourselves out at CES, um, you know, this January, by the way, uh, man, we just barely missed that whole coronavirus thing. That was, uh, that was great. Well, time yeah, to CES's I, party. yeah. I reckon if I reckon if CES was happening anytime soon, it just wouldn't go ahead. So oh, oh, uh, it, I, I it sort of yeah, yeah. yeah, I sort of feel blessed that uh, we 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 actually got to have it. And uh, I knew corona, coronavirus was um, serious when I heard yesterday the the new James Bond film had been postponed. I thought that was yeah, until that Thanksgiving. Was, that was or, like, uh, yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, 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 which was which clearly the, the and, that, and that's a smart move um, on their part. But um, yeah, it's certainly, it's it's a it's a big concern down here as well as I know it is in the US. But um, yeah. oh. CS is a CS is a really important launching pad for Swan, and and 
So, uh, you know, we were there and, and it's a good chance to, to um, interact with our customers, but also uh, in a media that we know like yourself. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we, we were really happy with the way it all went this year. Yep. Yeah, it, it, it was certainly a good show and a good show for us. I'm happy to hear it was a good show for, uh, you know, for Swan as well. Uh, some of the trends that we saw out there and and this, you know, we've noticed noted this before. Uh, two things. And one, it actually works to your benefit is that that integration. I think that even... Uh, even Amazon, Google, Apple, most people who make even, uh, well, I would say the majority of the smart home kits and the smart home ecosystems, the ecosystems themselves are starting to bleed over into each other. I think that uh, that Amazon can control Google devices, and I think that Google can control Amazon devices in certain situations. And then, of course, everything that would integrate with one or the other can suddenly work with both at the same time. It's uh, you know that that level of integration, that level of communication between all these different products. And then I would say the second thing is you know that we saw was this resurgent or I, I guess kind of furthering of uh, do it yourself. Everything was do it yourself. And, uh, you know, some people are going to say, man, when is one company just going to do it for us? Uh, mm-hmm. I gotta say, you know, you probably don't want that because, uh, being able to kind of pick and choose the best from all the different offerings, certainly great. What were some of the trends that, uh, you know, that you noticed at CES and, and you know, just at the show? Yeah, C- CS can can sometimes be a little intimidating for uh, a company like Swan because we wander the halls and we see it seems like everyone's trying to get into smart security. You know, it, it feels like everyone's got a you know a new little camera or something. So um, certainly, the, the, you know, and it, it's nothing new, but everything's smart. Um, you know, everyone's talking about their integrations, and and uh, certainly we're, we're part of that with both um, Google and Alexa, but also Ift. You know, um, IFTTT. Um, that's something we, we're doing now as well. That that seemed to be um, kind of a hot topic. Um, but you know, the other things I saw were just you know around robotics. Um, seemed to be a lot more robotics, um, and more uh, of an, an environmental conscience this year. More products that were about being environmentally friendly and coming up with um, eco-friendly solutions for technology and and for for products. So you know, be it you know, cars made out of new materials or the way their, their um, you know, fuel systems or whatever, it just seemed to be more of a, um, uh, a ramping up of, of um, thinking and technology around the environment, which I think is a great thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, from Swan's point of view, I've got to say, it was actually one of my favourite CSs of all time. I think I've been to 12 because um, we, we were an honoree in the Innovation Awards. And so um, that was a real that that, that was, yeah that was um, for a new product called our tracker camera, uh, which is a sort of a wide angle camera that stays still, but then um, it, it digitally pans and tilts. So it, when when it sees activity, it moves around following the. Um, it's not on our website yet because it's uh, it's coming <laughs> out in the next yeah. yeah it's coming out in the next month or so. But but yeah it it, it digitally pans and, and opens up a second camera view. So you, you keep the widescreen view. But then when it sees activity, it opens up the second screen that then follows the activity, which is really cool. And, and yeah, so we, we were, you know, shown in the, um, in the awards area at CS and, and uh, we, we won a, uh, three other awards at the show too. One was from Rolling Stone magazine, which was, was really fun. And one was from um, USA Today. So yeah, we, we were really, really chuffed and excited about that. And just on a personal level, I just felt a sense of pride because uh, that was the first award we've won, mind you, first time we've ever entered. But just to see us amongst amongst those other innovative brands that that are that winning awards, that was really really fun for us. So um, yeah, it's it, it's certainly um, I don't want to say it's impossible to stand out, but with I think there were like. 300,000 or like, no, I'm sorry, about 150,000 people, uh, thousands of, of, of companies and presenters and things like that to stand out above the crowd. And of course the, the, uh, you know, the CES innovation awards themselves are always a great place to look for, you know, great new tech. So congratulations, of course, on all those awards. Yeah, uh, yeah. And definitely looking forward to those. So, but I, you know, the show itself, um, it, like you said, it was a great place to talk to, I guess, other, other companies in the space as well. Uh, when it came to the security app, uh, obviously, like you said, you have you know over a dozen people working on the app. Uh, every, you know, all the cameras work within your own singular app. It's that's all well and good, uh, but I guess this idea of bringing other things into the ecosystem, because like 
you mentioned that you were agnostic, that you'll work with anyone. That's great. Uh, your developers will make sure that, you know, if you buy a product, it'll work. Uh, but then, of course, being able to not like take other people's um, security feeds, or, you know, camera feeds and things like that, but more so, like I was saying about the uh, smoke detectors, being able to take outside information that maybe, you know, didn't originate from a SWAN device and then being able to activate your SWAN devices based on the information. Is that something that, uh, you know, you, you've considered doing? Yeah, absolutely. And that, that that's what's coming is um, integrating your security more inside your connected home or your smart home. Um, and that's so IFT, you know, being um, connected using IFT. Um, so you can imagine uh, a camera, the, the spotlight camera, um, if it sees activity going a certain way, it may then trigger a light, uh, you know, your light going on slightly further around, um, you know, on the side of your house mm -hmm. or, um, you know, other technology around the fact that your home may then turn on, you know, you, the, the, um, the temperature within your house in your um, air conditioner to the temperature you want it to be. So it's about, we, we acknowledge that we're never going to be making all these products. We need to partner with like brands that are part of the IFT um, network. And so that's what we're doing. So yeah, we, we're all about making um, our security devices more useful, smarter all the time. And we, we acknowledge we've got to partner with other brands and that's why, uh, that's what we're doing with the IFT integration. And um, yeah, it's, it's certainly exciting seeing where that's all going to head. I think there were, there were a lot of probably listeners out there in the early days of the connected home who were, were sort of like, you know, do I really want to know do I really want my fridge to, to be smart? I don't know that I do. You know, do I really need to, you know, it needs to make sense. So, but I think, you know, more and more, and I think security is one of the biggest parts of any connected home. Um, it, it, the integrations are now starting to make sense for everyday people. And I think that's where it's really exciting. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and of course, uh, we have a show based on If This Then That, IFTTT. Um, that show is about like three, three and a half, four years old now. It's, uh, you know, been quite a while since we covered that. But that is a that is a wonderful platform if anyone out there has not checked that out for really all kinds of smart devices. Um, you know, let's say that you get home and you want your light, as you said, your lights to come on and your thermostat to change uh, as soon as you get home, stuff like that. It's... Uh, it, it's what the jet it's better than the Jetsons because the Jetsons themselves even <laughs> had to push buttons. So this, this, this <laughs> yeah. is buttons free. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, with all that being said, um, I guess just the basics, you know, that we didn't really cover. Uh, I, I mentioned that, you know, people can find you of course at places like, uh, Lowe's and, and so on and so forth. Uh, where's the best place to go to, I guess, kind of get one of these, uh, where can they shop for one? And yeah. Yeah, so um, Sam's Club um, yeah, in store. We've got the three pack of the Spotlight uh, on special there now at, at two thirty nine. So that's the camera we we're talking about before. So that's mm -hmm. in uh, most of the Sam's Club stores, but also online with Sam's Club, Costco dot com. We're in Best Buy stores and online at Best Buy dot com, um, and then Fry's and Micro Center, and then Low stores, and then some of the online um, players, of course, Amazon and uh, B and H Photo. Um, but if you need more information, swan.com is a good place to start. Uh, and, and for most of the products, you'll be able to find in the where to buy section, which retailers those particular products are stocked in. Perfect. And of course, we'll have links to all of that at um, really at Computer America. And, uh, you know, we'll have in the show notes after today's show. But uh, Jeremy, I wanted you to have the last word. Is there anything that we didn't cover? Anything that we didn't touch on you feel that we should? Um, I just would say to the listeners in general, just have a think about your, your home security. There's an old um, insurance industry stat that I, that I like to, to mention sometimes, and, 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 and I remember I heard it and I was like, wow, that's, that's um, uh, worth thinking about, that you're eight times, eight times less likely to be broken into if you have some sort of security presence at your home. So, um, you, you know, you're far less likely to be broken into. So have a think about uh, a security strategy for your home and think about getting some cameras and, and particularly at the front of your property because they play a really important deterrent role, uh, particularly if they've got lights and, and siren um, and two-way talk like the spotlight camera. But just think about home security because, you know, you really want to make sure that, you, you know, the, the most important people and things in your life are safe. So, um, yeah, have a, have a think about security for your home or your small business. And, and if you're doing that, hopefully you'll think of Swan. But certainly it's it's worth, worth having a think about because there's nothing worse. I talk to 
uh, customers all the time. And there's nothing worse than being broken into that sort of loss of peace of mind that, that yeah. you can potentially get. So, so definitely have a think about about security, and and it's so much easier and more affordable than you think. So that would be my last word. It's yeah, it, it's one of those things. It's kind of like um, you know, we also talk about backup and you know things like like that for people's systems and computers. Um, you know, a lot of people come. It's like, well, is there anything I can do? And it's like, well, after the fact, not so much. But going forward, you can do X, Y, Z. Um, you know, if, if you are unfortunately broken into or something like that, uh, after the fact, you know, you really can't do much, but you can get something for, I guess, kind of the next time, or as you said, preempt it and be safer all for it. So everyone, once again, computeramerica.com, or if you'd like to check it out directly, swan, uh, S-W-A-N-N.com. Uh, again, we'll have a link in the show note and everyone, we've been talking to Mr. Jeremy Stewart, who has been so gracious. I, I really apologize. I, I wish you were, uh, I'm sorry. I wish I knew that you were calling from Australia. Uh, we could have worked out some better times, but thank you so much for no, not at taking all. the time. Yeah, my pleasure, Ben. Great to talk to you. All right, perfect. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do computer and technology news. We're going to end the call, but again, thank you so much. Everyone, be sure to check that out. So everyone, let's go ahead and continue on with computer and technology news. Brought to you by Computer America. <laughs> years so everyone now computer and technology news i think that our first story and we have a number of them uh that we can do in only a very very short time to do it in let's talk about and actually a lot of them are about coronavirus just you know kind of it's just kind of the state of the industry so uh let's talk about okay hackers what bad people what scary people well, check this one out. This is going to be about, well, from Wired, saying that hackers can clone millions of Toyota, Hyundai, and Kia keys. Encryption flaws and a common anti-theft feature expose vehicles from major manufacturers. This is some of the worst possible vulnerabilities. Unfortunately, they're the most common, which is something that's an industry standard Um <sighs> You find a flaw in it. And I can think of a number of situations where, uh, let's say, Wi-Fi encryption standards have been compromised. I would say that, uh, you know, certain standards in uh, in the infrared spectrum where you could, you know, kind of um, overload a certain bandwidth and you could make certain devices kind of short out. Uh, whenever something that is commonly used by millions of devices, that's a problem when you find a flaw in it. Oh, and, and of course, things like processors such as Intel when they found a flaw in the actual underlying technology. So we seem to be in that problem now, and this can affect millions of vehicles. Saying that researchers from, from uh, KU Leuven in Belgium and the University of Birmingham in the UK this week revealed new vulnerabilities that they found in the encryption systems used by immobilizers, the radio-enabled devices, inside of cars that communicate at close range with the key fob. And of course, that allows the car to start. Specifically, they found the problem in how Toyota, Hyundai, and Kia implement a Texas Instruments encryption system called DST-80. A hacker who swipes a relatively inexpensive Proxmark RFID reader transmitter device near the key fob of any car in, uh, with the DST-80 inside can gain enough information to derive its secret cryptographic value. That in turn would allow the hacker to use the same Proxmark device to impersonate the key inside the car, disabling the immobilizer and letting them start the engine. So a couple things there. First one. First one is the fact that, well, the hack isn't really that bad. It's not like they have a master key and they can get into any car uh, from Toyota from like 2011 to 2014, uh, Hyundai from 2013, 2016, Kia 2016, 2014, um, you know, uh, seems to be in about the 2013, 2016 year models is about where uh, you have these vulnerabilities and it's not like they can just walk up and unlock the car and drive away. No, you have to be able to swipe 
the key fob from someone or at least get close enough. So let's say you see someone walking away from their car, you walk right behind them and you hopefully are able to read the information off of the key fob. And then uh, through some kind of software manipulation, it does not sound like this is automatic, but rather uh, they can take the information that they scan, take it back and, you know, kind of put the information on the RFID distributor. Then you can't even unlock the car though. It's not about unlocking the car, it's about disabling the immobilizer, like they said, and they're able to start the car and drive away. So if they're able to get physically get into the car, if they're able to physically get near the person with the key fob, and they didn't have the key, then they're able to at least start the car if it is a keyless starting vehicle. Very, very niche, uh, niche very, um, very particular kind of hack. It is a big vulnerability. It is it is one of the key safety features of a car is that you have to have the key to start the car. This takes that down just a little bit, but it's not perfect. It's not, uh, I would say not cause for alarm. This works very well in a laboratory setting. I would not say this works very well in a, uh, in a real world scenario. So uh, they had a couple of responses here. They said that Kia and Texas Instruments didn't respond. Hyundai noted in a statement that none of its affected models are sold in the U.S. So, hey, at least uh, that market's okay. And, they, and Toyota responded that they, the described vulnerability applies to older models as well as current models. Uh, well, current models have different configurations. That means different parts. And that this vulnerability uh, constitutes a low risk for customers as the methodology requires both access to the physical key and to a highly specialized device that is not commonly available on the market. Which, uh, you know, you can get the device they're talking about, but I would say is highly impractical. So I wouldn't really worry about it. The researchers say that they decided to publish the findings to reveal the real state of immobilizer security and allow car owners to decide for themselves if it's enough, saying that, quote, it's better to be in a place where we know the kind of security we're getting from our security devices. Otherwise, only the criminals know, end quote. So, yeah, the title is a bit sensationalized. Yeah, this does affect millions of cars. Um, how many cars are actually going to be stolen like this? I'm thinking the hot wired uh, situation that you've seen in Hollywood is probably the better solution than, you know, kind of super hacker stealing an old 2013 Kia, you know, Kia Rio. So there you go. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and continue on. We have time for just one more quick, quick story. And all right, this one caught my eye. Waymo. Uh, that would be Google's version of self-driving cars. They were one of the first that was Google self-driving car rebranded Waymo uh, to fall underneath the umbrella of the Alphabet Corporation. And hey, it's been, you know, kind of quietly chugging along ever since. Some of the best self-driving scientists, engineers, software designers out there have come from the Waymo uh, laboratories. It's just that they leave and they... Um, they get hired, you know, they either start their own firms, as was this case, or they get hired by Uber and Lyft and, you know, these other companies that want to start their own self-driving programs. But unfortunately, sometimes they take trade secrets with them. And I don't mean in their brain, I mean rather on a USB stick. And that's what he was accused of. And that is what, well, he was found guilty of. Mr. Anthony Lewandowski is set to pay Google $179 million to end a contract dispute. Imagine having a contract worth $179 million. He said that uh, he once was one of Google's most prized talents and someone who helped pioneer its work on self-driving vehicles, but after their relationship turned sour, he then stole trade secrets from the firm. They said that his new company was later acquired by Uber, igniting a court battle between the two corporations. Google accused the ride-hailing titan of colluding with a former employee to steal Waymo secrets. And I actually recall when this happened. Uh, so, gentleman leaves Google. Gentleman starts company, standalone company, to you know promote software on self-driving vehicles. Uber acquires in a takeover of this company, 
and suddenly this guy is now working for Uber. It was it was almost like a little roundabout way that Uber could could protect itself from Google for what this gentleman stole. So they mentioned an arbitration panel ruled that Lewandowski and his colleague breached their obligations as well as engaged in unfair competition when they started a rival company and brought Google employees over. That said, it's unclear if he has to pay anything, although I already know from a different, well, actually they mentioned here in the article, uh, Lewandowski has filed for bankruptcy to be able to negotiate debts, telling the court that he only has 50 to $100 million in assets, which aren't enough to pay off the 100 and $500 million in liabilities. Uh, that 50 to $100 million, probably going to be Google's. Um, this was a really, really bad thing to do on his part obviously uh it's and of course uber is going to be better for i don't know if uber and of course uber may have to shoulder the payment depending on the terms of his contract in addition well as we said he uh, has filed for bankruptcy so uber might be on the hook as well but uh, i think that the whole reason that he started his own firm was to protect himself was for uber to protect themselves from google so there you have it. It's uh, if you want to talk about spy, you know, the spy game, that is it. So everyone, speaking of it, that's it for us here at Computer America. We want to thank you for tuning into the program. Uh, if you have any other questions, live at ComputerAmerica.com, reach out to us on social media. We're actually thinking thinking about integrating uh, tweets into the show, so you can live tweet us during the show. Uh, that might be fun to do. And hey, you can of course interact with us there. So everyone at Computer America on all social medias. Until next time, have fun. Thank you so much. Bye everyone. <laughs>